In this tutorial we will learn about ROS2 control and how to use it to build a four-wheel steering robot model. ROS2 control can be used both with physical robot and with gazebo. Using ROS2 control, it is possible to control nearly any robot with relatively small effort. So, what is ROS2 control? The ROS2 control is a framework for robot control using ROS2. The ROS2 control framework consists of the five GitHub repositories. The first is ROS2 control. This repository contains the main interfaces and components of the framework. The second ROS2 controllers repository contains both use case specific controllers such as diff drive controller, gripper controllers and general purpose controllers such as velocity controllers, effort controllers. The third control toolbox repository contains PID controller related code and service messages. The fourth real-time tools repository contains a set of tools that can be used from a hard real-time thread without breaking real-time behavior. The fifth control messages contains base messages, actions, and services useful for controlling robots. Let's see ROS2 control architecture. ROS2 control architecture consists of five components. Controllers, controller manager, resource manager, user interface, and hardware components. The controllers are objects derived from controller interface and exported as plugins using plugin lib library. Controller Manager connects the controllers and hardware abstraction sides of the ROS2 control framework. It also serves as an entry point for users through ROS services. Resource Manager abstracts physical hardware and its drivers for the ROS2 control framework. It loads the components using plugin lib library, manages their lifecycle, state of the components and command interfaces. User interface enables the user to interact with ROS2 control framework using CLI. Using CLI, the user can load and unload controllers, see joint states and many other things. Hardware components enables communication with physical hardware and represents its abstraction in the ROS2 control framework. Now let's talk about four-wheel steering theory. The four-wheel steering robot has three operation modes. The first mode is in phase mode. In in phase mode, robot moves keeping its orientation. Since there is no yaw movement, Robot velocity and steering angle are represented using only the X direction and Y direction velocities. The second mode is opposite phase mode. In opposite phase mode, the robot moves as a usual car with Ackerman steering geometry. Note that with the same yaw rate, if X direction velocity increases, the steering angle becomes smaller to prevent the robot from overturn. The third mode is pivot turn mode. This is the mode when robot turns around its center not moving in longitudinal direction. The wheel should be tangent to a circle the center of which is the same as the robot yaw center. Now we are going to explore how to actually use ROS2 control. Firstly, install the ROS2 control package. Then, install the ROS2 controllers package. Other required packages will be installed automatically along with these two packages. Install Gazebo. Next, install Gazebo ROS packages. Gazebo ROS packages is a set of ROS packages that provides the necessary interfaces to simulate a robot in Gazebo. It integrates with ROS using ROS messages, services and dynamic reconfigure. Install the Gazebo ROS2 control package. This package integrates the ROS2 control controller architecture with the Gazebo simulator. Now let's see the code. 
Download the project from the Google Drive. Move to the Source folder. There are two packages, Gazebo Simulation and 4WS Control. Let's see from the 4WS Control package. Open the Robot Control Pi script. These are robot dimensions. Note that if the wheel steering axis goes through wheel center, Y offset value will be zero. These are the arrays to store steering angles and wheel velocities. The order of the joints is as has been defined in the controller's yum file. Also note that name of the topics should be controller name plus commands. In these lines, wheel angle and velocity are calculated according to the mode. Note that wheel velocity and position signs also depend on how you have defined your model in an SDF file. After calculation of the angles, we have to convert it to the float64 multi-array format and publish it. Here, operation mode of the robot is decided based on which button has been pressed. In this tutorial I have used Xbox 360 controller, so if you are using a different controller make sure which button corresponds to array index number. It can be easily confirmed by publishing the joy topic. When a button is pushed, the corresponding index value should become 1. In this part, robot target velocities are calculated based on joystick value. In the real robot, these values should be decided based on actuator capabilities, but in the simulation, you can set it as you want. Now let's move to the gazebo simulation package. In the models directory we have an SDF file which defines relative link positions of the robot, robot control and gazebo plugins. In the config directory there is a controller yum file which defines controllers. The joint state broadcaster reads all state interfaces and reports them on the joint states topic and the dynamic joint states topic. Here we define controllers. In this tutorial, both forward position controller and forward velocity controller are forward command controller types. This controller just forwards the commands down to a joint. Here, properties of the controller are defined. These are the joints the controller will control. Interface name should be the same as the command interface name defined in the SDF file. Here, hardware interface type is defined. Note that ROS2 control allows to create any interface type by defining a custom string. Now let's see the SDF file. Here, joint state publisher is defined. Under the ROS2 control tags we define interfaces. When using ROS2 control with Gazebo, here, Gazebo ROS2 control Gazebo system should be specified. After this, command interface for each joint is specified. Finally, we specify a path to the controller YAM file we have previously written. In URDF file, we can use the find package command but it seems that with SDF file this command is not working, so we are using an absolute path. Note that you have to change the username to yours to do the simulation successfully. Now let's see the launch file. Open the robot sim launch pi script. This launch file has nothing special except for controller execution. Here we specify execution of the controllers. 
Using the execute process action, we can start any process as if we would start one from the command line. Also, it is possible to see all available ROS2 control related commands from the terminal. So, we can use absolutely the same command to load controllers using the terminal. To launch the simulation, first execute the source command. Then launch the robot sim launch pi script. Now you can control the robot using your joypad.